Okay. <clears throat> elimination. Elimination. Let's see where we're at. Any questions up to where we left off? Let's go back and see how we did on the uh, eliminations, uh, stereochemical requirement, etc. See how we did on those. Back in the camera. Here we are, we did the first one in class. I don't think we did any of the others, did we? I know a number of you have been asking questions about these, doing a good job on these. I see how everybody has done. So we have a product for this second reaction. Draw the product on the board or show the product on the overhead. Name your product. Final exam is what, two weeks? Substitution or elimination reaction? Elimination. <coughs> Why do you say elimination? Camera. Very bulky base. I'm glad you didn't say it because this is the elimination hand up. <laughs> Once you get to the test, you ain't going to know which hand up we're on. It's going to be all. <laughs> Very bulky base. This is, this is O minus, right? I'm going to have a tough time doing substitution. If you want to get elimination, we said one of the last things we looked at, we have a choice of three bases. If you want elimination, could, could we do substitution here? I mean, if we had a, some other nucleophile, leaving groups on a secondary carbon, you could do substitution there. If it was on tertiary carbon, no matter what the base was, as long as it was strong, you ain't doing SN2, so it would be E2. But here you can actually do substitution. But the reason we use a bulky base is so that substitution won't take place. It's a classical elimination reaction. You see such a, uh, a base here. Now, of course, you have testing context. For example, if it's a multiple choice and all the reactions are substitution products, I mean, one of the answers is right. That means for some reason it was a substitution and you need to then from there decide which would be the best substitution. Um, but first inspection, this looks like an elimination reaction with that bulky base. Uh, strong, okay, is it going to be E1 or E2? <coughs> well, the base is strong, so it's going to be E2, strong, strong nucleophiles and bases are bullies. Bimolecular, SN2, E2. Here I come. I'm not waiting on you to ionize. This is the thought process that goes with these reactions. Alkene reactions, you didn't have to think as much. You recognize the reagent. Oh, I'm making an epoxide. Draw the epoxide. Decision making here. Okay, so what are your possible alkenes that can be made? How many theoretical alkenes can be made? <coughs> Two. Three. 
including stereoisomers. It's the same approach we did above. Didn't we draw compounds above and decide which one was going to be formed? Have a consistent approach to everything we do. <coughs> There's three possible products here. I'm sorry, I think there's four. Yeah, there's actually four here. St. Sapp and Hoffman, but both of those are stereogenic. Everybody understand why there's four here? But that should have been the preparation for this because that's the process. We have a Bayer hydrogen here, it's bolded. We have a Bayer hydrogen here, there's actually two there. Drawing one. It's not chiral. The carbon's not chiral, so I'm not going to draw any specific projection for that hydrogen over there. HA and HB. Removal of which hydrogen will give the state sub product? Okay. Removal of HB, elimination of HB, <coughs> along with the leaving group, will give a hot milk. Which one is going to be more likely removed in this reaction? I said HB. Why HB? It may not be right now, but there's free rotation. Isn't it because HA has the two stations And thus, they're both sterically hindered. HA is more crowded. So which one is going to be most likely to strike it, HA or HB? HB. HB, yes. This is where you will get some variation amongst the constructors. <coughs> some instructors, for some reason, don't like to look over here. Even though a final exam, ACS exam may do that. I don't some people say, well, the reason for the bulkiness here is to keep it from doing substitution, and then we get HA because that's going to be the more stable alkene. We call that the uh, SATF product. Um, is this bulky enough that it's going to prefer HB? Sometimes there's some vague vagueness here. What if, what if the base was... Maybe that instead. That's less bulky than that one. That one's hugely bulky, yeah. <coughs> is this one still going to favor HB or will it favor HA? It's an absolute question. Relative. Is it going to more favor HA or? Relatively, it should more favor. What if I gave you a base like this? Is this going to favor HA more? Yes. Yeah. So what about this one? Is this going to favor H, A, or B? Which one's your choice? You see how it's hard to tell? I mean, you're going from least and something that's very. This here, it's like, I don't know. How sterically hindered is this? Because I could get more sterically hindered. Um, maybe you see questions like this. Show both the Saitsev and Hoffman products. 
Or maybe you see a question like this. Here you go. Show this 8 step problem. When there's some vagary here. If this was the base, which problem are you going to show? SATEF. Because the SATEF is the best product, and this is going to have no trouble with attracting HA. All right, well, let's do this first. Show the SATEF product. So which H, which H we're removing? Okay. <coughs> what what mechanism are we doing here? E two. We have any requirements for E two? The H in the leaving group must be what? Anticoplanar. I say must. <laughs> Essentially must. It can be syncoplanar, but that's a very difficult reaction. <coughs> Highly preferred for it to be anticoplanar. When we do this, we want the H in the chlorine to be anticoplanar. If possible, can it be? <coughs> Usually it can be. Well, in some cases, maybe it can't. But with this, with free rotation here, it, it, it's going to be able to be there. Okay? What are the two alkene? If we put the alkene here, what's it going to look like? Remove the H and the leaving group from these two carbons. This carbon is going to have a methyl and an ethyl. This carbon's got a methyl and ethyl remaining. This carbon has just an ethyl remaining. All right? But the ethyl can either be trans to the other ethyl, or it can be cis to the other ethyl. Both of these are SACEF. The SACEF has, is sterogenic, which we're going to get. This is where we have to look at the transition state and the H and, and the leaving group being anticoplanar. And the best way to do that, if you want my recommendation to always be successful and to limit confusion, is to draw this in a Newman projection. Looking down the two carbons that are going to become the alkene. All right? Front carbon, what's on the front carbon? <coughs> circle, circle, dot, dot. Front carbon. See something coming straight down. And then look at it front carbon over here. What's going straight down? The methyl group. What's on this carbon coming towards you guys? The hydrogen. And if I'm over here, it's to the right. I'm looking at it. It's coming out like this. It's on the board like this. Right? It's folded. It's going to my right if I'm over here. You want to see what I see? There it is. I'm just drawing it right here. There it is, you see? All right, what's, a, what's going behind the wall? <coughs> Alpha group, right? All right, second carbon, back carbon. What's going straight down in the plane of the board? Ethyl. Oh, it's actually eclipsed with the methyl. Straight down, like this. These are actually right in front of each other, right? Okay, the chlorine's like this. All right, here I am, but let's move this out. Here I am, chlorine's coming toward, right? It's actually eclipsed with the hydrogen, with HA. That's HA here. And then the chlorine eclipses with it. And then there's an undrawn hydrogen here going back, right? Got to be careful, though. That, that H is not a beta hydrogen. That's alpha hydrogen. That's the, that's the H that's on the carbon of the leaving, but it's not abstracted. 
but someone will get confused and start doing chemistry with that H. No. Um, that H is eclipsed, it's going back on the carbon, it's uh, here, okay, H8. Right there, the H and the chlorine are both like this. They're coplanar, there's the plane, but they're thin. We need something to move over like this and to be anti-coplanar. Let's rotate the front. Uh, the chlorine is still here. The H is still here. The ethyl is still here. But now we want to rotate the HA here. Everything's moving 180 degrees. The methyl is going to go straight up. And what else is on the front? The ethyl is going to come here. There's two ethyls, right? Okay. Now the elimination takes place. anti coplanar The base, all right, whatever the big R group is, right? These electrons take the H. These move in. We can't see the two carbons, but these electrons move in between the two carbons and then kick off the leaving group. It's put in. All that's concerted. These groups don't have a chance to rotate. This is the required or essentially required transition state confirmation. Once the double bond is put in, these groups are fixed. As is right here. Which one are we going to get? First of the left or right? Left or right? Correct. Why? The two ethyls are on the same side of the alkene. <coughs> now, I'm talking about the same end. Same, the same side. <coughs> They're on different carbons. The ethyls are on different carbons. This ethyl's on one carbon, that ethyl's on the, the back carbon. They're on the same side, the same face. Okay? <coughs> That leads to the product on the right being your, your product. To get the product on the left, <coughs> it wouldn't have had to have eliminated like this originally. Here, the methyl and the ethyl are on the same side. Like this, methyl and ethyl. To get that product, it would have to eliminate from like this. Base takes H, electrons move in, chlorine off. But that's a sin coplanar arrangement of the H and leaving group. This thing has free rotation, okay? It's, it's going gonna, it's gonna to prefer to eliminate from here. This has nothing to do really with best confirmation. This may actually be the best confirmation if we look at it. No, that, that's not because everything is, it's actually not because everything is eclipsed. Eclipsed is never better than staggered. <coughs> but there may be another staggered that's better than this. But the best transition state is from this one. We're talking about the transition state of this reaction. Okay, that's how you do these. So there's your state set product. All right? State set, however you want to spell that. Okay. Um, we may refer to the other one in just a minute. Okay, uh, <coughs> show the Hoffman product. is removing which H? HB. Okay. This is much easier. 
What do we do first? <coughs> What's the thought process? <coughs> okay, that's reasonable. Don't have to in this case. Why do you want to do Newman, Alex? Just to see overall what it looks like. So you can see the anti coplanar better? No, that's reasonable. You don't have to in this case, though. There's two H's here. Okay? HB and HB prime. There's two of them. Whenever there's two H's, you don't have to consider it. Because there's two different conformers that will have an H in the leaving group anticoplanar. It doesn't matter which H we eliminate. It's the same. Since there's two of them, there's going to be two conformers that, that meet the requirement. And since there's two conformers that meet the requirement, how do you decide? You're going to get the best. Because if something has a choice, it's like equilibrium. If you have equilibrium, you're going to get the best. So which would be the best? Let's draw them both. Uh, double bond here. I have a methyl there. Chlorine used to be here, but it's gone. The H, one H used to be here, it's gone. But then here we have, boom, boom. This should still be stereochemistry, because we did no chemistry here. There's one. <coughs> On the other hand, we could have the same thing, except it's stereogenic which is why I had to adjust instead of three. There's four possible products. There's two. St. Seth, here's the two Hoffman. Putting double bond between this carbon and this carbon by doing a beta elimination, H and leaving group. Which is better? The Sicily cis or tran. Which is better? Yeah, this one. This is your Hoffman product. Since there's two H's, there are going to be two, two confirmations with, the, with an H in the leaving group anticoplanar. And when you have two, the system gets to decide. <laughs> when it gets to decide, <coughs> that's when you go to just get the best. And the best is, is trans. Over here, we did not get the best. The best would be this, the Apple's trans, which here we would call the major groups trans is what? Uh, e? This is Z? We didn't get the best over here. Why not? Because there was only one hydrogen. And thus, we only had one confirmation where the H and the leaving group were anticoplanar. And that one confirmation pointed us towards this product. Okay, there's your four possible products. Uh, I, I'm saying this is probably going to give uh, Hoffman product. You can't get more bulkier than that. If you ever go get Hoffman, this is going to be Hoffman. I'd say this is the product of this, this reaction. Uh, but if you're asked to show the Saints F, then you would uh, show that product over there. Uh, Saints F. I think there's a hockey player for Toronto Maple Leafs. His name is Saints F. He's got a Safe step on the back. I want to get a picture of them. <laughs> Russian. Um, okay. What if we did this reaction by an E1 mechanism? First off. How would we get an E1 product? What would we have to do different? What reagent would we use instead of that to get E1 product? 
Okay, so what what would be what would you suggest using? Yes, wheat base. What would you use? Water. So so we get rid of this and just water. Water is a weak base. Anything with long pairs could be a weak base. Why water then? <laughs> Why water? Anybody else? What would you do? Just stir this in water? Water and heat. Heat? Okay. Why heat? Mm -hmm. Why heat? Help ionization. We know heat helps, heat helps elimination reactions because it's entropy driven. Question though, you think, is this going to be soluble in water? That's a plain organic compound. I mean, it has a little polarity with the, probably, even with hot water, it probably ain't going to dissolve. How about instead ethanol? Organic. Analogous to water, it's a, it's a neutral OH. It's organic, more likely to dissolve, give you a solution. You might could even do it with no solvent. Just heat this thing and it ionize and the, and the Cl minus acts as a base. Once you ionize, you're going you're going unimolecular. You're going E1. <coughs> uh, e, so which would be the E1 product if we did something like this? Which one is the E1 product of the four? In general, which do you get with E1? I agree, say so. More generally, what, what do you get with E1? The, the, the most stable possible. But E1 is thermodynamically equilibrium. Which of the four appears the best? This one here, right? Yeah, E. There's an E1 product. That's the best on the board. Those two are better than these two. Why? Because these are tri-substituted alkenes. Those are di-substituted. Of the two tri-substituted, which one's better? This one, bigger groups, anti or trans. Groups have more room here. Here are the two alpha groups. See, that's free rotation. This, this could have been drawn like this instead. See, that, that's all free rotating. But these are like, ah, uh, uh, stay away. But all that energy is, there's an there's a average here. And that's a, uh, it's, it's a simple thing. We've okay, so if you could be asked, well, hey, if you wanted to eliminate this to get this product, Would you use the original conditions or our newly proposed conditions? The newly proposed, eh? right? That's what we think. So you have to think about conditions you want to maybe use if you have a desired product. So that's experimental design considerations. Okay, next one, ring here. Final questions before we erase. Ah, uh, what do we got? What is TEA? We saw it in the substitution handout. Triethylamine, nitrogen with three ethyls. Triethylamine. What could triethylamine be used for in this reaction? What's its role? Is it a base? SP3 nitrogen. Weak base, strong base. Strong is what we've always said. Anions, SP3 nitrogen, strong. It's a strong base. Now, it's not the strongest of the strong. It's actually the weakest of the strong. It's neutral. 
but it's strong enough for us to call it strong. <clears throat> sp3 nitrogens are the only neutral functional groups that are good strong bases. Any other base it has to be an anion. Natural products that have sp3 nitrogen in them are called alkaloids. We, should, we look at that. Alkaloid because they have alkaline properties. Because of the presence of the sp3 nitrogen. Okay, we got a strong base. THF is a common solvent, tetrahydrofuran. Common solvent. Got to recognize solvents as you go along. Generally, they don't react. And if they do, it's odd. It's called a solvolysis reaction. All right, we got a strong base. Um, what we got over here? Carbon with a leaving group. Tetrahedral carbon with a leaving group. What can we do here? Is the base sterically hindered? It's got these three wings on it. Yeah, it's in the substitution handout. I mentioned this, and I said we were looking at nucleophiles, and we said that's a poor nucleophile because of the steric hindrance. And, and the note said it's commonly used for E2 eliminations. Commonly used for E2 eliminations. What we're doing here. We've got a strong base. Strong steric hindered base. Okay. What are, where are our beta hydrogens at? There's one here and it's bolded. Called an H8. Uh, one here. It's actually two here. Let's draw them both in. H B. I'm going to call this an AC, because this time I'm going to differentiate between these two. I could have up here as well, but I just consider them the same. I could have labeled these two and said, which one has to be removed to give the product we said is going to form? I just said they're the same. But let's, let's do that down here. Okay. Which, which product do you want to get here, favored? Which is favored? Say so for Hoffman. Hoffman, sterically hindered base. But maybe the steric hindrance is just there to keep it from doing substitution. <coughs> Again, it's hard, to, it's hard to know sometimes. It is... Again, let's, let's show them both. Show the state set product. Or hold on, let me, let me reevaluate because it could be a case where you cannot. You know how we rotated the Newman and we got the anti -coplanar? You could have examples where you cannot achieve anti <coughs> If you can't achieve anti it's like, we're not going to do this reaction. Okay, so let's think about the, the state set product though. That would be removing which H? HA. Let's draw possible products because we need to see those. I can see them quickly in my head. What does what what that product look like? <coughs> Saint Seth product. I'm going to be putting double bond here with an ethyl here. That is, remove this H and this I and put double bond in here between where they used to be. That'd be ring with, with double, uh, double bond there, and then ethyl. No, a common mistake you guys make is when you, when you draw such, you guys want to like continue with stair chemistry here or something. But now that this is double bonded, that what's the heart, the geometry of that carbon? It's sp2, what's the geometry? Trigonal. Planar. It's now planar. Nothing is forward or back. It's all in the plane. Okay? So we'll, no projection there anymore. It's planar now. Okay. This would be the Zetsev product. Is that alkene stereogenic? Is there another Zetsev? Any stereochemistry here for the alkene? 
No, it's not. There's no stereochemistry. You cannot have cis or trans with that alkene in that six-membered ring. Okay, what does the Hoffman product look like? Hoffman product would be removing one of these aces. I'm not going to differentiate right now, but put the double bond here. The alpha would still be here. This carbon is still tetrahedral. You still have the projection, tetrahedral projection down there. We'll remove one of these H's in the leaving group. This would be Hoffman. Is this product stereogenic? No. These products have no stereochemistry. There's only two. How did we know this was the Zaitsev? Because I knew that putting the double bond here and having the substituent on the double bond would make this a tri-substituted alkene. But putting the double bond here, I knew the substituent would not be there. This would be di-substituted. Less substitute. That's Hoffman. More substitute. But I could see that before I even drew that. You guys may not be able to see that. or okay. Some of you can, probably. But draw them, okay? Which, which is more stable? Well, this is more stable. That's why I call it Zaysil. Okay, which is going to be formed in this reaction? This is a product here. Must be Hoffman. Why must it be Hoffman? <laughs> let's, look, let's look at the Zaitsev, self, removing this H. Are these anti coplanar Anti is synonymous with trans. Are these two trans? They're cis. Will these two ever be trans? Not with this molecule, unless you, if you switch these, that's not the same molecule. That would be a diastereomer, et cetera. Not a confirmation. Never anti coplanar. Never. And so. This reaction goes the other way. It gives Hoffman. Because one of these H's will be. Now here we can differentiate. By the way, when I drew these in, I don't know why I did them both bolded there. That doesn't look right. One's bolded, one's dashed, right? Two in the plane, one forward, one back. Let me ask you this. Which H remains here? B or C? Which one is over here? I'm going to draw this H in. Which one is remaining here? H B remains. Why? Because H C is the one that gets eliminated. H C and the leaving group are trans, so anti. The triethylamine. Takes HC, these electrons move in, kick off the leaving group all together now, E2 elimination. No carbocation to be found, right? Uh, let's look at this closer in H confirmation. <coughs> let me let me get this here. Uh, right. Uh, let's put the iodine here. Uh, the leaving group has to be actually equatorial when we do this. <coughs> axial equatorial. Axial. Yeah. Axial, right? Can we say that? There's the iodine. Let's put the ethyl here. If I end up with an antimer, nobody say anything. 
Uh, the ethyl's here. It's trans, right? So that means the, eth the ethyl is going to be what? Axiom equatorial. Will the ethyl be axiom equatorial? Equatorial? Equatorial. Axiom? I'm having a bad time hearing. I can't hear anything. That will be axiom. They're trans, right? Everybody agree they're trans? They're trans, right? This one's up compared to the H. This one's down compared to the H. They're trans. Okay, this is HA. Here's a leaving group. Here we go. Are these two anticoplanar? No, we've already said they weren't or not. But do you see how they're not? Iodine straight up. The alpha was anticoplanar to the iodine. Not the H. And the H will never be here when the iodine's there. But let's look over here at the other carbon, the other going the other way. You've got one uh, H straight down and one H like this. Which H is straight down of the two, B or C? Well, straight down is trans to the iodine. Which one's trans? Here, that's C. This is B. Okay, you can't really see the plane, but it's there. It's, it's just like, like this. And the iodine's over here straight up. Okay? And the H is over here straight down. But I can turn it so you can see the plane. Well, let's do it like this. Now it's flat on the board. That's straight up. This is straight down. These two are anticoplanar. The triathlon medium <coughs> takes this H. These move in. Kick those off. You see? Anticoplanar. But I kind of showed you how you can see this over here as well. But this is where you can really see it. Okay, and so the one that remains would be HB if we were to designate that somehow. But in real life, these H's are the same, and it wouldn't matter which one was still there because they're the same. You'd have to somehow, you know, maybe if one was an H and one was a deuterium, then you can start distinguishing them in real life because we know H's don't have letters on their back, right? <coughs> Okay, there's questions below. What do we got here? Uh, okay, I spent a good amount of time on this today. We'll uh, finish up this handout on Friday. This Friday, this Friday we're going to have a review session? Friday at 7.15. Uh, we'll finish up elimination. And we'll begin the uh, UV biz. Uh, lab upstairs. See you upstairs this week.